urban composer. Welcome to Attack the Media. Welcome to Attack the Media. Welcome to Attack the Media. Because they don't have it all like encyclopedias. Welcome to Attack the Media. Welcome to Attack the Media. Welcome to Attack the Media. Because they don't have it all like encyclopedias. Welcome to Attack the Media. And I am your host, sports person. And today's guest, we have Coach De Niro. <laughs> How you doing over there, Coach? Well, I'm good, my brother. How about you? Oh, man, I'm just doing spectacular. So first, before we get into today's uh, show, I just want to tell you what Attack the Media is about. Oftentimes, us as viewers... We follow sports. We follow our teams. We, you know, think things of that nature. We we love sports. We're invested. So we go to the ESPNs. We go to the, you know, the Fox Sports Nets, and you know, we we religiously get opinions. And oftentimes, you do have some people who are completely off the wall with the things that they say. And sometimes it's just flat out disrespectful to the people that they are privileged to cover because oftentimes they're never going to meet these people face to face or, you know, in anything of that nature. So they don't have to, to be concerned with anything. And then you have these people who do this thing called hedge where they give their opinion and they insert, you know, keywords like probably or maybe, you know, basically so they can come back and say they were right about something, even if they were wrong, you know, they were wrong. You know, for, for instance, I can say something um, outlandish like LeBron James is probably going to win one more championship before he retires. And then if he doesn't, well, I said probably because I wasn't 100 percent on board with it and then if he does I then get to say I knew he was going to win another championship so the the people that hedge to me though those are the worst people but sometimes they stand by like something but they won't just come out and say they're wrong they they will defend to the end so this is what attack the media is about because no one critiques them for the outlandish things they say so let's start holding them accountable and, you know, let's cover them. Let, let, let's cover them the way that they cover athletes that we enjoy watching, that they even enjoy watching, and that they have the privilege of watching as their job. You know, let, let's, let's hold them accountable for some of the, to quote Stephen A. Smith, blasphemy, the blasphemous things that some of these people say. So... Let's go over what we're going to talk about today. Um, and I hope I don't miss anything. I'm, I'm still going to talk about everything, but it, let's, you know, let's, let's try, try to start the, our first show off right. So the first thing we're going to talk about is why people in L.A. are Laker fans. I am a Laker fan. Why we hate LeBron. Then I'm going to go move into him, that, LeBron that's showing up for uh, the pizza party, uh, this whole tweet fiasco, I'll, I'll get into that. And then we'll talk about uh, Dave McMiniman, I think is how his name is pronounced, calling Kobe uh, pathetic. And then we'll talk about what to expect from LeBron with this new Lakers uh, and what Chris, I don't even remember his last name, but we'll cover it uh, in, in the audio. And then we'll move on to the last segment, which is called Shut the Fuck Up. And basically, shut the fuck up is when someone says something so stupid or so misinformed. And the thing is that these people are, are on TV, on the radio, that it's just irresponsible to put out misinformation, the wrong information to us 
And it, it's, it's just terrible because then they can paint a negative picture or give other people the idea who don't know or have done their research are willing to do the research on their own to find out if what these people are saying are factual. So today's shut the fuck up person is uh, Shannon Sharp, who I'm actually a, a, a big fan of. So anyway, let's go ahead and start the show. So uh, today on Bleacher Reporter, which has been covering uh, what's going on with the mural uh, of LeBron, um, there has been some, how can I put this, controversy over the mural first starting off having the words King of L.A. And... By the way, the mural was, to me, it was awesome. I think it was the right way to, to bring him in. And again, you know, I, I can't reiterate that uh, the controversy behind it. But I still think it was a good gesture to say, hey, you know what? Come do some good stuff. And I'll tell you where it went wrong. First, it should have not said King of L.A., it's one thing for LeBron to be known as King James, and I would have been cool with that. Welcome to L.A., King James. Would, for me, would have been a better uh, quote or you know, something that would have been m- more received by, uh, by others instead of it being like blatant disrespect to the king of L.A., which could go to a host of different athletes, ranging from, of course, Magic, Kobe, Kareem, James Worthy, I mean, Clayton Kershaw. It, it, the, the point is that there are a number of athletes that have won titles for the city that deserve the title King of L.A. more than... LeBron. Now, I could understand if we were a city that is not about championships, that, you know, doesn't have many titles to to our name, then, you know, it, it would make sense for someone to jump the gun and just say he's the king of L.A. because of the expectation for him to help us win. That's one thing. But it's really not the case here. So anyway, um, there is, I have this video that I'll show you guys uh, where the artist ended up painting over the mural because of all of the controversy. Initially, uh, they drew a line through it and, you know, wrote his finals record three and six. And, you know, it, it, I, I couldn't tell you anything else that happened because I only go by what I see as far as photos. But he ended up painting over it. Uh, because of the unnecessary attention, the unwanted attention that the owner of the establishment who allowed him to paint it on the wall, uh, he painted he painted over it because of that. It was just too much, and the owner of the establishment just didn't didn't want any of the attention anymore. It was turned what was a great idea executed. Poorly, I think. What was a great idea that was executed poorly, it was just too much. So it got taken down, I believe, today. It could have been yesterday, but it got taken down. And uh, I was listening to uh, Marcellus O'Wiley from uh, Sports Nation. And I'm going to play a clip of what he said before we attack him. There's a mural in Los Angeles depicting LeBron as, quote unquote, the king of L.A., vandalized. The mural painted last Thursday and Friday, some random Twitter followers said $300 to anybody who will destroy this. The mural, uh, that's not enough money. Hell no. The mural has since been restored, but... (laughs) 
I think the phrase, and this is where people get a little upset, the king of L.A., we've had this discussion several times on the show, mm. um, and ourselves missed it, so we'll ask him this question. Yeah. Uh, L.A. fans, especially real true Laker fans, have a hard time uh, accepting LeBron because, and in, in, in there has always been this debate that people have forgotten about Kobe and went directly to LeBron. So here we are again. Mm -hmm. L.A. fans are under the impression that if he brings one or two chips here, that no one will respect Kobe, and that's not the case at all. Mm -hmm. like Kobe's been a day one. Yeah. So do you understand? Don't start. Magic was day one. Right. But <laughs> Magic, Magic I mean, is day one, but he's been here his, whole, Magic, he's been Magic, here his whole career. Magic at least drafted here. He Kobe was, was drafted to Charlotte. No, all right, he's let been me here stop. his whole career. <laughs> I got Don't be a hater. Yes. He's been here his you're whole right, you're career. Right. So do you see why fans are a bit jealous of LeBron, and is it ridiculous? Is it a big deal or no big deal? Okay, let me get my joke out the way. And get pay your respects. Joke out. All right, uh, I cannot look at graffiti without saying, we make these trains beautiful. Shout out to Rainbow Beach Street. Anyway, for those who don't know that, Google that. Um, what? Don't Google that. <laughs> yeah, that's old school. Um, here's the thing. Why is LeBron facing so much hate from Kobe Stein? And I can tell you right now why. Because he's landing in L.A. as a greater player than Kobe Bryant versus when Kobe Bryant landed in L.A., he was not a greater player than Magic Johnson. So we didn't see this issue when Kobe was trying to back up what Magic did as a Laker. But you're seeing it now because, really, they're telling on themselves. They're in their feelings because they're like, damn it, of all the players out there that we can't make an argument that Kobe's better than, it's that one, and he's the one that's coming to save you, but also in that process hurt your feelings because yeah. he's better than Kobe. Yeah, but that doesn't make sense. Oh, see, we talk <laughs> that just don't make no sense. But I'm gonna tell you why. I understand what you're saying, but if we're talking franchise and who right. we believe, you're telling me to pick my favorite son. I can't get my stepson is not gonna be better than my son that Ooh, I gave birth mm, to. Good point. Go girl. ahead. All right, before I get in on Marcellus Wiley, let me talk about Kerry Champion, who. I think highly of. She is a, a Laker fan, so she's all right with me. But her analogy is just horrible. Like, you might as well say that the the Lakers can be the, your husband, and you don't love your husband enough to love the stepchild that he brought to you. This is, which is really kind of sad when you think about it. So I get where she's coming from, but her analogy is terrible. Um, but, you know, I, I get it. You know, I would never, ever put LeBron over Kobe, period. Okay, and I have a, a whole list of reasons why. But more importantly, in Lakerdom, I could never put him above Kobe. I, I, just, I just couldn't. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it would be irresponsible as a Laker fan, especially when the standard has already been set. The bar is already set. The bar to be in that top tier of greatest Lakers of all time requires five championships to the franchise. George Mikan, Magic, Kareem, Kobe, top tier. You, you're, he'll never get in that conversation. So moving on, let me tell you why, Marcellus, L.A. fans, Laker fans, why we hate LeBron. It's not because we think he's better than anyone, for that matter, that ever put on a Laker jersey. That has absolutely nothing to do with it. We hate LeBron because of the Bron sexuals. That's right. You Bron sexuals are the worst. Now, there's nothing wrong with being a basketball fan who follows LeBron James and thinks LeBron James is the GOAT, and you have your reasons why. Okay. I have nothing against that because I have my reasons why I think Kobe is the next to MJ. I have my reasons, so I can understand that. But to the point where you guys, okay, are so invested in LeBron's sweaty nutsack that you believe that everything that drips from that nutsack is holy water. That you believe that LeBron, wherever he goes, you got to go too, okay? To me, that is ridiculous. I'm sorry. That is ridiculous. 
For example, had Kobe left when he threatened to leave, I understood why he wanted to leave. Had he left, I would not still be a Kobe fan. I wouldn't have anything against him. The man did bring three titles before he did get upset. But I would not follow him because all I care about is the Lakers winning. But I get it. People are attached to a particular athlete. It's Team LeBron. Fine. But when it comes to the point where no matter what someone comes up with as fact, you can show someone facts, you can show someone highlights, and they will still, they will still refute those facts that are against LeBron. They will refute every everything that's negative or a knock on LeBron. They refute it out of emotion. Like it's it's not from logic. You can't be logical with LeBron sexuals. And that makes it really easy to hate LeBron. Now me personally, I do not hate LeBron. I think he does a lot of great things off the court. He's a really likable person. Okay, he's a very likable person. He is a great athlete. In fact, he is the greatest athlete that I've ever seen play basketball. Doesn't mean he's the greatest player. Those are two different things. For for a person to do what he does to his body consistently in the work ethic that he has and to keeping it up, I must admit he is the greatest athlete I've ever seen. So. Personally, I have nothing against LeBron. I am actually looking forward to what he brings to the table that will lead us into multiple championships beyond his career. I'm looking forward to that. And I do believe he'll bring in one championship in a Laker uniform. I truly do believe that. And I'm hoping that happens because I'm a Laker fan, a Kobe fan, and I want to see LeBron win because he's a Laker now. Like, I, I, I could not hate LeBron for being the Laker because that means I would hate the Lakers. So this whole notion that we have a problem with LeBron and we're in, in our feelings because of Kobe, Kobe's legacy, you have that completely twisted and understandably, I It's obvious because, you know, Marcellus is a Clipper fan, which technically makes him a Laker hater by association. By the way, whoever defaced that mural could have been a Clipper fan. Could have been, it could have been anybody. Could have been just a LeBron, a plain LeBron hater. Because LeBron is so easy to hate because of these Bron sexuals. LeBron is very easy to hate. So it, it could have been either one of them. And then LeBron didn't do too much but add fuel to that hate fire (laughs) by not showing up uh, yesterday, which I don't know if anyone's familiar, but uh, he has a a nice steak in an establishment called Blaze Pizza. And in that particular establishment at Culver City, He retweeted that he hadn't been to a pizza party in in a long time, which I'll I'll play a clip from Rob Parker, Shannon Sharp, and uh, Skip Bayless from Undisputed today before I make this last point about the mural and why it eventually came down today. I don't know if you see in this video. Um, You know, basically it's just a lot of unnecessary stuff or unnecessary attention uh, to that mural because of the the king of LA uh, to me which was the most disrespectful thing it's like you, you I, I understand being excited I understand wanting to show respect but to place that where a bunch of Laker fans are you know pe- people that that don't have the type of respect for him that, uh, you know, anyone who just loves the game of basketball, people that just don't have that kind of respect for him there, it, it, it was bound to get attacked, you know, cause there are some real hardcore Laker fans 
that would not appreciate that simply because he hasn't done anything. He hasn't played a single game. Not a single game. And to just be that overzealous, you know, it, it, it just left a bad taste in my mouth personally. I like the mural on top of that, but the King of LA thing, it just left a bad taste in my mouth. Now, personally, I wouldn't have done anything to it, but, you know, it, he's, he's never the, the guy who, uh, the artist who painted it, he should have been more responsible and not even, you know, done that or at least thought about how this would affect the establishment of the, you know, the wall that he painted. Because at the end of the day, all this negative publicity to that owner, you know, people may not come do business with him because that mural is there. And he, you know, people could believe that that owner of the establishment is not a real Laker fan or, you know, just this, it's just a whole bunch of stuff that could have cost the owner of that establishment money in the long run. So it was a little irresponsible of the artist to even put King of LA to begin with. He could have put LA welcomes King James, you know, some something to of that nature that would have been very subtle because we get it. His nickname is King James. Cool. You could have even put a mural with his, the back of his jersey saying King James. I think more people would have been okay with that. But calling him the King of LA is a terrible idea. But anyway, let's listen to uh, Undisputed uh, from earlier today. You know it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. This is another example of why LeBron James can never be the greatest of all time. He does not appreciate the fans. It's just a fact. And, and it's more than just he didn't show up for this little pizza thing with this pizza place. In this situation here, it was just like, why put that out there if you have no intention of going to Culver City to the Blaze Pizza? Don't, don't make people do that. It would be nice to not have fans feel like a fool because LeBron kind of threw it out there. I saw all the lines. I'm, mm -hmm. I was not – I live not far not from far Culver, from there, yep. Culver mm -hmm. City. And I drove past the lines, and I'm like, oh, my God. 50,000 people. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Did they have 50,000? That's 000? what they were estimating. 50. Yeah, it was so yeah. many people, Skip. People. It was incredible. Mm. If you don't mind me asking, what has the GOAT – so you said he can't be in the conversation. What has Jordan and Kobe ever given away? All right, pause. So – this is the part that started to get me riled up about today's show when it comes to Le Shannon Sharp, um, as Skip Bayless likes to call him, is that why are you throwing other athletes under the bus for LeBron? And Le Shannon Sharp is a bronsexual. I put him in that bronze sexual category that even when he does something wrong he still has to find a way to defend him and apologize for him but why bring up jordan or kobe and what they have or not given away simply because you are misinformed about things that they have done i personally have witnessed a high school that i went to get funding in a program from Jordan, I personally have witnessed Kobe give back to the inner city neighborhoods in L.A. So before you go and you want to put another athlete down just to bring a plateau, uh, you know, for LeBron, it's like, dude, you 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 should be better than that. I, I don't get it. You should be better than that. I'm just lost. So let, let, let's finish this because, it's, you know, I don't want to get all riled up again. Which one is, hold on, before you answer that. I'm which, not, I'm hold not on, talking hold on, about no, 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 that. You say you can't no. go. Which one has given away 1,100 scholarships I'm not, to a city? He does great off the court. Well, you said he can't be the GOAT because he didn't I'm, show it to a blade. No, 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 no. So I, I really like how Shannon didn't want to just let Rob answer the question. And, you know, it's not like Rob had any facts in front of him, which is the problem I have with Shannon, because he just basically went off of his emotion and not the facts, because I have footage, which I'll show you where 
Kobe goes down to Skid Row. Let me ask Shannon something. Shannon, have you ever been to Skid Row? Have you given anything to the people of Skid Row? I I understand everyone has a foundation, which is why I don't understand why Shannon even went that far to say, what has Kobe given away? What has Jordan given away? Dude, why even go that far? They all have given away something in their name. Just because Kobe doesn't own a pizza place and give away free pizza. I mean, come on now. Be be for real. Just it, it, you, You're not making any sense. Yes, LeBron gives away scholarships, but then you shouldn't sit here and negatively uh, paint this picture while you're on national television that LeBron or Kobe would have they given away there are answers to that but you shouldn't be questioning it like they haven't done anything but in any way besides the fact that you are a black male <laughs> for for one you of all people should not be bringing another black male down Simply to put LeBron up. But I digress. Let, let, let's finish the clip from today. This was a situation that didn't have to go like this. Because I will agree with you and Skip and I, have gone, we, we both agree. Had he just said City of uh, uh, Blaze Pizza will be giving away pizza between two and five at all Los Angeles area locations. And by the way, there, there are about 40 in this right, area. Right. And just left it at that. We good. Mm-hmm. It was when he made the impli- uh, the uh, implications, or he implied he through a tweet that he might even show up. Mm-hmm. So once that goes out, now people are saying, even if they live close to a Blaze location somewhere else, they're going to drive across town because they want an opportunity not to get the pizza because the pizza are the same at all locations. It was a chance to get a glimpse True. or maybe touch. LeBron James. That's why I said hashtag Culver City. And then what made what made it worse, Skip? I believe had he not shown up, it'd have been fine. But it was when Savannah posted the picture of him chilling in the pool. It was like that's insult to injury. That is rubbing oh, it in. Man. Now see, this is the part that I don't understand. Why towards the end you go you like I don't I don't get it. You could have just said this to begin with instead of bringing up other people and what they have or have not done because let's face the facts, you don't know. And it's okay that you don't know because everyone doesn't know everything. Everyone doesn't know everything. And that's fine. But the point is, Shannon, he didn't show up after the tweet could have been interpreted that he was going to that Culver City Blaze Pizza location. He could have easily said, I haven't been to the pizza part and a pizza party in a long time. Everyone enjoy. I haven't been part of a pizza party in a long time. Everyone enjoy. I get it. The implication was that he may have showed he may have, you know, was going to show up. He never said he was going to show up. And this is where, see, I don't even like LeBron. You know, but. Again, I'm now holding him accountable for not showing up because as a Laker fan, the most important thing for me is that he shows up on that basketball court. I don't give a damn about him showing up to no pizza place. What, what, what is that going to do? No, he's here to bring us a championship or two. He is here to play for the Lakers. And that's all I care about. So what? He didn't show up to some pizza place. You know what? That's what you brown sexuals get for spending the your, your life Okay, trying to go see him. To me, there's no difference between seeing him on Instagram TV than seeing him in person. What, you think you're going to get his phone number? You guys going to be friends? You guys going to get invited to his house and have a pool party or something like that? Like, be for real. I would never camp out, spend a day or two of my life waiting for some individual. 
I don't care who it is. It could have been Kobe, Jordan, Obama. You name it. I would never spend my life like that. Okay? Especially when there's YouTube, you know, there's, 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 there's so many ways I could see these people that I admire other than me camping out and waiting. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with people who, who do that. I'm just saying it's not for, for me. And more importantly, it's not for real L.A. Laker fans. Yesterday was more about the bronze sexuals, and they were upset that he didn't show up because there are people in Cleveland jerseys out there waiting for him. They are not Laker fans. I don't feel sorry for them. Okay, now I may feel sorry for the kids because those are the type of people that I I can see if I was a kid and it was Kobe or something and it was an opportunity like that. I might have ditched school to go do that. But we're talking about grown people. We're talking about adults. And when you devote your life to someone like that where you're willing to take a day off of work, that's sad. But I digress. He didn't show up. Shannon should have just said this from the beginning instead of throwing other people under the bus. Instead of trying trying to make this about this. I, I, I get it. Rob Parker did start off this conversation saying that this is why LeBron could never be the GOAT. Because LeBron, you know, doesn't care about the fans and all this other stuff. But stick to the subject, Shannon. Don't try to tear other people down to improve your argument when in the end you say it's bad, especially when his wife posts a photo of him chilling in the pool while all of this is going on. Okay? You should have just went with that. This whole segment, you know, that that whole back and forth thing with Rob Parker, it wouldn't even went on that far. So that's how I feel about that. 